my people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a damn great day. Welcome back to the channel. Firstly, before we get into this, thank you so much for subscribing. We hit 4,000 subscribers. Woo! Uh, before the, the end of January, which is absolutely insane. Absolutely incredible. Big ups to all of you guys who have subscribed. I am not feeling great at the moment. I'm feeling slightly under the weather, but the videos will continue. And I will also say this. It is the last day of the double upload system. From tomorrow, we're going back to the one video per day. Um, apart from the weekends, on the weekends, of course, I'll still do the tactics videos, plus the career modes and whatnot. But yes, I am going back to the, the single one video per day type, type scheme. It has been a grind. It has been real. But you know what? It's been worth it for you guys, specifically for you. Um, I, I will also say this, because we have hit 4,000 before February, I will more or less go back on what I've just said, and I will say this, on Thursday I will be uploading three videos, or it's it's it's, it's essentially four, four, four for 4,000, but it's three videos in total, um, I'll be uploading it through various points of Friday, just to celebrate the fact that we hit 4,000 subscribers, so... But other than that, it will be more or less back to one video per day during the week. So yes, guys, in a video like this, we discuss potential transfers, who you should look to get out of the club, where you should look to try and set up your youth academy, of course, the financial aspects of it as well, and, and obviously just assessing the squad as a whole. So if you don't mind, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let's hop on straight into the goddamn video. A realistic career mode goes a very long way if you have the realistic tactics, and of course, I've already gone ahead and made those tactics for you guys specifically so go ahead and check them out we've done the the 41212 system which is this one right here as well as the 4222 system so go check them out let me know down below in those videos and of course i hope you enjoy the tactics so taking a look at the team at hand of course we've got the likes of Thibaut Courtois who this season is out injured for majority if not the entire season of course they brought in backup option Kepper from Chelsea he hasn't done too bad. I know recently he's been making a few mistakes here and there, but he hasn't done too badly. Now, the question I pose to you, I've tried to do some research, and if you are a Real Madrid fan, you might know more than me. Does he stay? Does he go? I don't know. I think he stays personally. I think Perez has seen enough to make the, the deal, you know, a permanent one. And to be fair, if Courtois does come back, or well, of course he is, you're actually not going to need to see as much from Kepa as what you would this season. So as an as adequate backup, I don't think you can get much better, as well as the likes of Andre Lunen. Now, of course, he is in the final 12 months of his deal. Does he go? Does he stay as well? Do you extend him? Now, I I, partic I like this kid, man. I, I really do. Of course, he is 24 years of age. I would extend him. I would offer him another contract and keep him as a, a potential rotational piece because... If Kepa does go, I think, again, you have a very adequate backup here for the likes of Thibaut Courtois. Moving on to your left-back department. Of course, you've got the likes of Ferland Mendy, Garcia, as well as this kid. Probably look to sell him, extend him, and then loan him out, maybe. But in terms of your, your two main options, we've got Ferland Mendy, who is on the transfer list. He has a link with a move away from the club. He has said that he wants to stay. He has said that he loves Madrid. But that's not how Madrid work. Madrid work and... and they, they run a very tight ship. If you're not good enough, you're out. And therefore, I think he's out. And of course, they are linked with a particular, you know, Canadian man from uh, Bayern Munich. But we will discuss that later. And then I think you've got a very good, adequate, potential superstar for the future in Fran Garcia. He is 23. He is 78 overall. I think he's a very good rotational piece. As for your centre-back department, we've got Alaba, we've got Fernandez, Rodri uh, I need to say Rodrigo, Rudiger. Um, Militao as well, and of course you've got Marvel and, 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 you know, Vallejo and so on, but there's four centre-backs, obviously they, they've been hit with some crazy centre-back injuries this season where the likes of Chermaini has had to drop into that centre-back area, but I would look to maybe find another player, you know, just have a solid five-man rotational unit, um, but to be fair, out of the, the centre-backs that we have here, 86 overall Militao, 85 overall Rudiger, 83 overall Nacho Fernandez, 85 overall David Alaba, they are all very good, very highly rated. So maybe a Rafael Varane from Man United coming back, bring him in, could also look to try and add to the rotational units. I don't know, maybe, potentially. It's something that you'll have to decide, but I think it's a very solid four-man rotation for the centre-back area. As for your right-back department now, We've got Danny Carvajal linked with a, a potential, you know, added year onto his contract, which would work out very well for the, the captain of the team. 
And of course, you've got Lucas Vasquez, who is in the final 12 months of his deal. Do the likes of Real Madrid extend him? And then, you know, for season number two, maybe, or season number three, you look to bring in somebody that's younger, more accustomed to, to the, the, the squad. I, look, I think Lucas Vasquez has done a very, very, very good job at Real Madrid um, over the time that he's been there. Whether it's right wing, whether it's right back, whether it's left wing, it didn't matter. He was quite happy to start and, and you know, fulfill his role. That's for likes of Carvajal as well, doing a very good job, very good servants to the club. But maybe they are getting up there in age, both 31 and 32 respectively. You should probably look to replace them with somebody slightly younger. Now, that person could be playing in Girona. I know that they are linked with a move for Jan Kuto. They like what he's doing. But we'll see. We'll see. As for the likes of Chermaini, Camavinga, Modric, Kroos, Ceballos, Valverde. Of course, we've got a few youngsters here. Nico Paz, apparently, is, you know, his talent is very highly rated. Um, Zidane, of course. That's crazy to me. And then we've got Brahim and then the superstar, Jude Bellingham. Now, there's a lot of midfielders here. Firstly, the young guys, I would look to try and, you know, rotate them out into the loaning systems, of course. Um, and then... You've obviously got your youngsters for the future in Chermaini, Camavinga, Bellingham, Valverde, and, and, and Brahim, and so on. But then you've got the likes of Modric and Kroos. Now, are they leaving? We, we don't know. There's rumours that Modric is set to leave at the, end of this, at the end of this season, as well as Kroos. They are obviously in the final 12 months of their deals. Will they be extended? I don't think so. And I think how they've structured it, that they've been there for the last two, three years that they've been able to help the likes of Camavinga, Chermaini. Um, I know it's only been for one season, but the likes of Bellingham as well. Valverde has obviously learned off of them the most. I mean, he is the, uh, he, I think he's the oldest of the, the young core. But again, 24 years of age, that's absolutely crazy to me. Um, and then, of course, you've got Ceballos, who is a very solid rotational option in the midfield. Moving on, though, to your forwards. Of course, oh, yeah, Ar Arda Gula as well. 18 years of age, Turkish international camp as an attacking midfielder or a central midfielder. A very good, adequate option in that attacking midfield area, especially if you do play the 4 triple 2 system where you have two number 10s. You know, he could slot in quite well. Um, so again, another good piece to add to this young team. But moving on though, to the forwards, we've got the likes of Vinny Jr., Rodrigo. I know this kid is linked with a move to, I think it's Valencia. Some, so it's, it is in Spain, but he is linked with a, a potential loan with rights and and i don't know it's it's a it's a loan with with a transfer fee attached to it but the fact that madrid would still own his rights i don't know how the the right system exactly works in spain but it's very weird he is going to be out on loan though of course hosolu was loaned in from uh espanol and then we've got the likes of bravo loaned in from the likes of um leverkusen i think he is part of the 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 youth setup of course i think madrid will make his move permanent he has got a, a good future under him um, or ahead of him, I should say, can play on either flank or potentially as a striker up front. He is only 18, but he does have a real face. So therefore, naturally, I would say make the deal permanent. But in terms of your forward line, you don't actually have a, a lot of forwards to, to throw into that attacking area. So the likes of Vinny and Rodrigo are, as your wingers, as well as the likes of, you know, Hosselu. Those are your, your outs and outs senior figures in the squad. So maybe looking to bolster them, I'm thinking... A specific number seven from PSG potentially, but we will talk about that soon enough. Okay, so looking at the the scouting systems and the instructions that I would tell you to give to your scouts, because obviously I know ball. Hopefully, anyway. Point is though, we mentioned this as we are going through the squad. The right back area for the future, it's not really sorted. You got Carvajal and um, Vasquez both in their their early thirties, so you are looking to replace them at some point in the career mode with a younger version so for the right back i've gone with 16 to 25 years of age and a world-class prospect now they have come up with arnal martinez which makes a lot of sense he is spanish as well he is a uh, 20 i think can play as a sense back a right wing back or even a right back so he suits the system very very well another area is the left back department now of course i have mentioned alfonso davies from bayern but if you're not looking to go in that direction you may be looking to find a more of a developmental type player the likes of a 16 to 25 year old makes sense as well as a world-class prospect. Then obviously I mentioned earlier they are in need of a striker. Hosolu is the only actual recognized number nine. 
So maybe looking for a world-class prospect in that or a world-class player in that um, area makes the most sense. I've gone with 21 to 26. So you want to try and sign them just before they hit their prime and then obviously you need to have world-class pedigree. As for the center back department, I've gone with two sets of instructions. One being first team quality. So you can look to maybe sign a backup type option and you need to be kind of young. So 16 to 25, as well as a potential world-class player. Uh, 21 to 26 cents back. I think that those are the two key areas for the sense back department that you should be looking at, especially with the likes of, you know, Alaba getting up there in age, the likes of Nacho Fernandez getting up there in age. You you might be looking to replace him at some stage. Now, let's have a look at the transfers. Of course, we've got the likes of Inazio, a left-footed center back, does have a whole host of really good play styles, ping pass, long ball pass, intercepts, and aerial. So the ability to play from the back, the ability to ping those long balls into the forwards, it would suit what Carlo Ancelotti and Real Madrid are trying to do, have the likes of Vinny, Rodrigo, and maybe a few others running in behind, trying to exploit and penetrate the opposition's back line with. So I think he would be very, very good. Of course, he is left-footed. He can be a natural replacement down the line for the likes of a David Alaba. Um, another player that is very, very, very heavily linked is Alfonso Davies. Now, I think he would very much fit the current systems that they are using, even if they had to like, switch to a, a 4-3-3 at some point. I think even with the the 4 one 2 one 2 him having the complete reign down the left-hand side, linking up with Vinny in certain moments would be very, very eye-catching, to be fair. So, also has a few good play styles, rapid and, of course, quick step. That link-up ability with the likes of Vinny Jr. or maybe somebody else down the line does um, entice one to maybe think about a transfer like this. Another player that you could potentially go for, and also a player that I know that is from the Real Madrid youth setup, and they still own some of his rights, which is, again, so weird to me. I don't know how these rights systems work. But Miguel Gutierrez, linked with a move back to Real Madrid, potentially, but he's linked with a move all over the place. So he could be a potential option for you on that right hand or left hand flank, sorry, um, being a rotational piece with the likes of Fran Garcia if you do shift out the likes of Ferland Mendy. As for the midfield, okay, so... Jamal Musiala as well as Florian Verts. Now these are two young kids from the Bundesliga, 86 overall, both of them incredible. And both of them can play as central midfielders or as attacking options or attacking midfielders. So I know Musiala has been playing on the wing as well. So maybe he could be a, a, a piece for that wider, more forward type area to go with. But again, they have been linked. They are wonder kids. Florentino Perez is very much interested in signing young players to try and build the team for the next decade, next two decades or decade and a half at least, um, and obviously signing the likes of Musiala and potentially the likes of Florian Wirtz would go a very, very long way in more or less stabilizing the future of this Real Madrid squad. Into your forward line now, we've got the likes of Takefusa Kubo. He's been in and out of this Real Madrid side. He's been loaned out. He's been sold with Real Madrid still keeping his rights. I think both the likes of Real Madrid and Real Sociedad have like 50-50 rights. But Real Madrid have a, a potential buyback option and whatnot. So he is linked with a move back to the Bernabeu. Play stars, finesse shots, technical, flair, and of course, first touch. I think he could be a very good rotational piece off the bench. Rotating between the likes of Vinny as well as um, Rodrigo. And of course, he can play up front as a striker. But speaking of strikers, Kylian Mbappe, final 12 months of his deal. Play stars, finesse, rapid, flair, acrobat, Travella, and of course, quick step. Linking up with the likes of Rodrigo and Vinny Jr. and Bellingham and oh my god, it would be absolutely insane. It would absolutely destroy every team you can possibly think of. Now, for me personally, I wouldn't make this move happen. I like having a bit of a, a grind in a career mode and just signing Mbappe and Vinny Jr. up front is absolutely insane to me and it would make the career mode as a whole very easy. But if you're looking for a realistic aspect, it is highly realistic that he does make the move to the Spanish capital. Okay, now, before we look at the Youth Academy, I'm going to look at the finances of this side. You start off with a massive 225 million euro budget. That means you can definitely go and get Mbappe in the first season if you would like. Maybe you go get Alfonso Davies as well. But you start off with a massive budget. Now, mine's slightly less because I have gone ahead and found some Youth Academy scouts. So finally, we'll end things off with this last segment. Of course, the Youth Academy, it's of, of late, it's become very important to what Florentino Perez and Real Madrid are trying to build, of course, building for the next decade and a half, two decades potentially. They've they missed out on the Neymar transfer a few years ago, trying to sign him, and I think it was then when Florentino Perez said, I will never let that ever happen ever again. 
So what they did was they set up massive scouting systems, youth scouting systems in the likes of South America. Looking at Brazil, of course, that's how they signed the likes of Vinny, Rodrigo, of course, Endrick as well coming into the side next year, I think, or next season. So they, they've gone ahead, they've scouted in Brazil. Nico Paz is a youth product found in Argentina, a very good young player, so therefore I've gone for Argentina as well. And then, of course, you're Spanish, you're, you're the Spanish capital, you should be looking to sweep up the, the massive Spanish talents that will be coming through the door. Um, and also trying to secure your future. So there you have it people, that is how I would start off a realistic Real Madrid career mode. If you have enjoyed this, please hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, please we make videos like this all the time, and of course, until next time, I'll see you later, I'm out.